That's the message we need to take to all of them. And when they start saying, we're here saving lives, so we demand that you get vaccinated. Well, have, I guess you could have them look at, you know, some of G. Edward Griffin's uh, weekly newsletters and find out the truth about the vaccine. But you know that the common sense would tell you they've already told you the truth. They devised a vaccine in two or three months that Fauci himself said would take two to 10 years. And so look at that and then say, what's the big concern that even all of them are saying, the media, the mainstream churches, um, mine included, and governments, all the 99% of the mainstream media, all of them are saying, you should get a vaccine. But man, that Delta variant is the key thing now, and we've got to stop it. Your vaccine that was headed for the first one can't do the second one. Yeah. They're different. And so, of course, now there's two vaccines. How many masks should we be wearing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zero, thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, but they want you to wear two, and uh, you know they should put three across your nose so they don't fall off while you're chewing something. And the airlines, why those wimps? What's the matter with them? Why are they letting people drink and eat on the airline and take off the mask while they eat and drink? Stupid! You don't let people drink and eat. They need a diet anyway. Okay? So you're just helping people the whole time. Okay? This whole thing, that government, can do anything to us, can suspend liberty, the entire Bill of Rights, and do whatever they want because there's a crisis and we have to take care of you. Were the communist dictators in the 20th century any different? No. They, they had the same exact program and now we're doing it in America because this really is a crisis. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it is or isn't. You don't get to do any of that. And you want us, you want us to mobilize and get behind you and get rid of this disease? Then let us move within the principles of liberty that America was founded upon and we'll join you and we'll come and help and do everything we have to. But you have to allow one thing, the truth. Yeah, that's right. And we will, we will unite with the truth. That's good. But when you keep spewing out all these lies and the farces, like <laughs> flying, I'm still flying, you guys. I'm still flying and it drives me crazy. Every seven minutes, there's an announcement about the federal law that says you have to wear a mask over your face and nose. And then they talk about social distancing and they put you on the plane and they stack you next to each other where you're bumping into each other and touching each other the whole four hours <laughs> so i've come to the conclusion that i need to write another book and i really didn't want to and i'm going to announce right now that i'm going to get moving on it because six months ago i announced the title are you sitting down yeah. Yeah, most of you are. Okay. The title of the book came to me right after I said I wasn't going to write any more books. I've written eight books. And probably one of the most amazing books ever was G. Edward Griffin's uh, The Creature of Jekyll Island. Doesn't that sound like a neat science thriller, science fiction thriller? Yeah. I wish it were uh, yeah. science fiction, but it was all true. So the title of my next book, that I really need to get out right away, is COVID-19, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go back and watch that movie, you youngsters who haven't seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I'm gonna be doing a parody between that movie and what's going on today. <laughs> Nurse Ratchet, don't you just... Don't you just hate her? 
How many nurse ratchets do we have across our country? Man, they're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bumper sticker out of that too. One flu. And we're, my my graphic art design guy's gonna have to really do something with the flu. You know, kind of. Anyway, you guys can help me out with that. But that flu's got to look really cool. One flu. Maybe it needs to look like a hat, a sneeze flu, a sneeze, or a syringe flu. Anyway, we'll get going on that because it is such a cuckoo's nest, isn't it? It's just so crazy. The other crazy thing, I go to, I go to dinner with my wife, my two little twin granddaughters and my son, and they won't let me in because I don't have a mask. And I said, wait a minute. They're sitting down right over there. There they are, right there, 20 feet from me. You won't let me go, because after I sit down, I could take my mask off. So for 20 feet, I could give everybody in there COVID-19, and after I sit down, I can't. And, and it's that kind of insanity, along with the airlines doing their thing, and everybody else, and the schools, and the insanity there. And I know, I know. Yeah, uh, so the bottom line question is there. Why would you send any of your children to those government schools in That's the first right. place? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take them out. So they're showing their true colors. And anyway, I've got a lot of work to do. and We've got a lot of work to do. But I, that main question is the, the message that you're sending. Ask them. The school boards are probably the worst ones right now. Yeah. Ask them. Do you really want the children in this school district that you're supposed to be supervising, you really want to send them that message that government can do anything to them, force them to wear a diaper on their face, force them to get a vaccination that is no longer uh, even by their own terms effective. Right. And it never has been. And there's show me the study that shows that anybody getting the disease now, if they're not vaccinated, the ones that are, all, are vaccinated are getting it just the same. So do, show me the study that shows that it's effective. Show me the case study. The FDA do one? No, they, there hasn't been time. Even Fauci said there hasn't been time. So we all know that's crazy. and We're gonna get beyond that now. We're gonna move, over. we've come to the conclusion. It's absolute insanity. Yep. And even if all of this were real and they were really telling us the truth, there's something that happened when I sued the federal government that I need to share with you. And it's an amazing principle. Now, all of you know I sued the federal government, right? Now, you didn't know that. Then why'd you come? <laughs> this little book, we still have those over at the table, right? Okay, and I, I hired some pretty girls to work my table over there. And they're really way too expensive, so you need to make donations over there so we can pay for all that. So, <laughs> so this little book is a review of my Supreme Court case. The United States Supreme Court. Uh, the, the first thing I learned when I filed this case, I was thrilled to go to the Supreme Court. I mean, it, it was so historic. Do you know what I really learned, though, along the way? I should have never done it. Should have never asked permission in their courts for me to keep my oath of office. That's right. I have to go ask district court, circuit court, and the United States Supreme Court, hey, you guys, I'm suing the federal government, and I'm fighting this in the federal government. But if you don't mind, can I keep my oath of office? I don't need their permission. Amen. Okay? So what we should have done is, and what I should have done, is tried to get other sheriffs to join me in saying, take your Brady bill and shove it. We're not doing it in Arizona. We're not doing it in our various counties. But I was a really young sheriff. I was really young at the time. It was, I filed it in 1994. And I just won my second term to be sheriff of Graham County, Arizona. And it was such a miracle. I mean, all this was such a miracle. I mean, you want to talk about David versus Goliath story. I sued the Clintons. And lived to tell about it. That is a miracle. That is a miracle. Okay? And that, it, it wouldn't have happened, but then six other sheriffs from across the country. This wasn't just in Arizona. This was all across the country. 
So one share, only one sheriff joined this case from Texas. Wow. There's 254 sheriffs there. Yeah. One, Sheriff J.R. Coob from Valverde County. And then one from Louisiana, one from Mississippi, one from Vermont, and one from Montana, and one from Wyoming. That's it. Seven sheriffs out of 3,080 wow. did this. And I started the whole thing. Crazy! <laughs> Another crazy thing about that. When I decided to sue the federal government, I thought, well, when I decided, <laughs> when I was told I was going to sue the federal government, I said, huh, you think I'm gonna sue? The little blonde girl inside the house, when I go in and tell her, is not gonna have any of this. <laughs> and I actually felt comfortable with that because I was scared when the message got to me that I was gonna sue the Clintons. I was scared to death. I said, ah, uh, she's not going to let me, and so I don't have to do this. And wouldn't you know it? She said, maybe now we know why you were meant to be sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. He got to her first. Yeah. You know? So that was another miracle. I mean, an absolute miracle that the pretty little blonde girl I married 46 years ago was totally in agreement with this. And it was... I still look at her and say, how did you say yes? You never let me do anything. You know? <laughs> and so when the case went to the district court in Tucson, we filed the very day the Brady Bill took effect. And the Brady Bill, this was the first time in American history that a gun control law was promulgated by Washington, D.C. and really promoted big time by Bill Clinton and all the Clintonistas. And it, it had in there a provision that the sheriffs of the, of the country would enforce it for them for free without any negotiation.